Hey there, this is Beth, the Sweet Urban Living Lady, and today I am doing some wild crafting out of my own front yard and out of my backyard too. Um, I have some violet and some purple dead nettle, um, white clover, and do you hear that in the background? The guy who cuts our grass cuts our neighbor's grass too and he's scheduled to come here today. When Mr. Sweet had to have surgery several years back, um, we asked him to cut our yard as well. And he does a great job, loving, um, but he will cut down my weeds. So I gotta, I gotta go get my herbs that people call weeds. And I've got lots of projects to do today. So come on, let's see what's going on. But here we have purple dead nettle. If we come over here, I have violets and over there I have some white clover growing. So this is a great time to harvest this purple dead metal because it's got little flowers blooming. See the flowers? Oops, camera works not too good. The sun's behind us. Okay, look really closely. Oh, there's some paper that got cut up. See the see the violets? So we're gonna pick those as well. Um, we can pick the the flowers themselves. Some of these aren't opened up yet because it's still fairly early in the morning and Usually by afternoon, my whole yard is just beautiful little purple dots. So we've got some over there as well. And so I'm going to harvest all of these so that they don't get <laughs> they don't get cut down. Okay, so notice how the violets are spread out where in the film area before they were clustered together. Okay, so Gary has gone to the other side for just a minute. I'm now going to get some white clover. Some of these are not as mature as I would like, but they're getting ready to go under the lawnmower blade. So I'm going ahead and pick them. So notice how there's this one sweet violet, purple violet in the midst of the clover, but how the clover is all clumped together, how the purple death head, those, those flowers were clumped together as well. There's a reason why we use the term shrinking violets, because violets tend to blossom alone. There'll be just one bloom, and a little bit further away, there's more. But with our clover, as you can see, you get them in clumps. They're close together. They're not spread, you know, they're not way, there may be a single bloom, but they don't mind hanging out together. So one of the things I'm gonna use my purple violet for is for making a flower ribbon. Here we go. See how they're growing together, little cluster. See how that one's growing by itself. So it's not that we don't see violets hanging out together, okay? That's not the point. But on many times, you'll just see just the one. I haven't picked around this one. Just see just the one. So that's what violets, here we go. Violets tend to be loners. And looky right there. Let's see if I can get that. In the way. There we go. I don't think that's an edible strawberry, but they're always fun to see. So while we're out here, let's do a, uh, an herb check. This is my mullen that I rescued last year from <laughs> the weed eater that Gary likes to wield. And look how beautiful it's growing. Nice and big. We did have some pretty cold nights, and so some of the leaves have a little bit of frostbite, but you can see it's growing, it's beautiful, and I surely do expect to have this flower this year. Okay, in my little planter garden, 
my rosemary is looking good. It's looking a little bushy. So I may need to shape it up some, harvest some, and shape it up. There's my oregano. And look what's coming back. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Echinacea. And I think I'm gonna transplant that out into the front bed. All right, my pink azaleas are blooming. These have been blooming for a little while. I've got my gladiolus coming up. I had a tulip, I've gotta clean out that bed. And here's some white azaleas. You know what, my daffodils never bloomed. But look, we had to cut down a giant sweet gum tree last year because it was rotted in the middle. And these azaleas, these beautiful purple azaleas had not bloomed like this because they weren't getting sun in several years. So now we're gonna have to get in here and shape them up. But look how beautiful, I think I might do a flower remedy blend out of my purple azaleas before they're gone. Okay, so we're back inside after harvesting our amazing herbs. I have the white clover. And so you'll see here, I've got, I've got a dehydrator. And dehydrators are wonderful because they can dry our herbs quickly. In another video I did on basil, I just left my basil that I harvested in a wooden basket with holes in it, a different one from this, but, but it had the same kind of wood. You can watch that video um, here. I just left them to dry. They um, dried for probably four or five months. And then when it was time for me to crush them into an herb for seasoning or to make a tincture out of, it was so easy. So we're just gonna oh, capture that little guy that just escaped. We're just gonna put our white clover on this screen. I was kind of in a hurry, as you may have realized, as I was trying to harvest before our lawn guy could come and get all of these amazing herbs and cut them down. So some of these are not as full bloom as, you know, I would like. They're just, you know, they're not full, but I went ahead and harvested them. They're gonna still have some, uh, they're gonna have some nutritional value. Now, I don't know if y'all know this, but white clover grows in yards here in the South, probably all over the world. Um, and it's a great anti-inflammatory. Um, it's great for respiratory support. It helps with coughs and colds. Uh, it supports the bronchioles and the lungs. It's a blood purifier and it supports heart health. So I'm really looking forward to taking this and drying it and making uh, some infusions out of it. The good news is I don't have to take a whole lot. I'm not making tinctures today. Today I'm just gathering my herbs and I'm gonna make used to make teas out of infusions infusions are great because you just put them in water not boiling water for a short time all right and for my next little project i am going to put my purple dead nettle i could probably have harvested some more and you can see there was a really good one these are kind of young but not only do we get the little flowers, but we also, they start to turn purple on the top. I thought I had one that I had set aside. It must have gotten mixed in to show you. But I'm gonna spread these out and put them on my trays for dehydrating because I'm gonna make teas out of these as well. Now, purple dead nettle is an antihistamine, an anti-inflammatory. It's full of vitamin C. So it's great for seasonal allergies too. Uh, it's wound healing because, and it's an antifungal, so it's great for healing wounds. And so the thing is, is when we're having all these seasonal allergies, the pollen's coming out and everybody's starting to get sinus congestion and what colds or summer colds, the answer is right here in our yards. <laughs> the, the way to remedy that is to use what's right there out your front door. If you live on any 
kind of land, um, but you can't spray it with herbicides and pesticides, and that's what we do. We put them lawn chemicals. So the last tray, of course, is for our violets. And because I was already sorting my violets uh, from the purple nettle, um, I already had them kind of sorted out. Now, I also have this bowl of water sitting here. And what I'm going to do with the bowl of water is I'm going to make flower remedies. I'm going to take these that I have, um, are just kind of left and I'm going to put them in this little small bowl of water and sit it out in the sun. And I explain how to do uh, make your own flower remedies in this video right here. And flower remedies help support um, our emotional health. Um, and that's why I kept pointing out, hey, look at how the water violets grow separately. They, they, they may have some clumps of the plant together, but the violet flower itself is a single flower. Now, these are single flowers, too. Our clovers are single flowers coming up, too. But they kind of clump together and hang out together. So what we're doing is we're just putting these in here. We're going to make the flower remedy. Now, as an herbal uh, sweet violet um, is also great for allergies. Um, it's great for supporting the lungs. It can be also be used to for wound healing. It's great for uh, stopping blood flow. It's great for seasonal allergies. All of these can be added to salads. They're full of nutrients. So, um, you know, I might actually go pick some more a little bit later <laughs> and, um, and have some with my uh, lunch today. I have to beat Gary, have to beat Gary because he is fast. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to now take these and put them in the dehydrator. That Now my dehydrator has a, an herb setting. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it on my herb setting and I'm going to take these and put them out in the sun because that's what we do with Bach or I keep saying Bach. Dr. Edward Bach is the one who came up with flower remedies. And he created 38, but there are more than 38 flowers in the world. And so we get to make our own. So let's put these up. Uh, let's get these in the dehydrator and get this in the sun. And I'm going to take, now that I've got my trays in, put my cover on. As you can see, herbs go on setting one at 95 degrees. So we're gonna run our dehydrator. Um, I have an Excalibur food dehydrator. I'm gonna uh, drop a link for that below if you're interested. But we're gonna run it for about, um, herbs tend to take about five to six hours. I'm gonna set a timer and check back in two hours to check on my little delicate flowers. And I didn't forget my flower remedy of violets. Let's go find a sunny place outside. All right, right now we have the morning sun. You can see the sunlight reflecting in the bowl. And that's what we want to do when we're making flower remedies. When there's float the flowers in some water, get them in the sun and let them sit for, you know, six, eight hours, however long. We'll check back in a, a little bit later this afternoon. Okay, it's been a couple of hours and we can see that they are drying, but they're not completely dry. Oh, I think this six hours is going to be good. Boy, that was loud. Let's check on our herbs and see how they're doing. Oh, yeah, those are nice and crunchy feeling. Those might need a little bit longer. Oh, yeah, those are hardly anything left to those. That's going to make one nice, one little nice cup of tea for me there maybe a couple of couple of cups of tea with the with these and so good